hello i have returned here on mama misty's real kitchen thank you for watching and welcome back like i said i am making meatloaf today i made my vegan meatloaf earlier now i'm making bacon wrapped meatloaf but i always do a regular one also because the last 10 minutes of the cooking process i'll pull it out and i'll just smear some brown gravy on top of it and then put it back in the oven and that bakes into the top of it it's really good <laughs> it's really good I promise but this is the bacon wrapped portion so regular meatloaf for those of you who either haven't tried meatloaf or never made it it's an old-school meal but if you make it right it's really good um, I use three types of ground meat I use um, a turkey, ground turkey. I use ground pork and ground beef. Sometimes I'll put lamb in there instead of the pork or I'll put double the turkey and beef because beef's very fatty. Even if you get the 95% lean, it's still fatty, but you need that fat. Um, but I do like to cut it down and add ground turkey or even ground chicken. And it just, it helps. It, it takes away that fat flavor you know you that it, it sits at the bottom the drippings and yeah no I try to cut down on that but it's really good I promise so three pounds of meat right now today I have a pound of beef a pound of pork and a pound of turkey I mixed it in the bowl and just like on my vegan meatloaf I sauteed roasted red peppers green peppers white onions and minced garlic put it in with the ground beef the ground turkey and the ground pork you mix it all up really really good because you don't want a section with a chunk of ground turkey or a section with a chunk of ground beef you want to mix it a lot um, just to make sure it's evenly distributed so with that being said again I have it all mixed up with the vegetables seasoning again the same like the vegan meatloaf the seasonings are pretty much the same you have parsley, you have onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, black pepper. You don't want to take the flavor away. The only difference with my meatloaf is I sprinkled some mustard seed and ground mustard in mine because growing up we'd have meatloaf sandwiches and it was always accompanied by mustard. Um, you don't have to, but it's a really good flavor and then you add some Worcestershire sauce. Mix it up, mix it up, mix it up. Just make sure you mix it up well. That's a big, big to do when you have something like meatloaf. So, again, I have that all mixed up in a bowl very well, and I am going to dress it up in a baking gown today. I have some basket weaving bacon laying around on my cutting board that I'm gonna wrap this with some love and it's gonna taste delicious later. So, here is my meatloaf that I already mixed up, just like I told you, like I just explained. Now, I'm going to take the appropriate size. I split this in half, so I have this little guy here. This is plain, it's gonna get coated with gravy. Last 10 minutes of bacon, put it back in, and it just, it makes this layer on top that, mm, it's just good. It's just delicious. Try it. All right, so other half. I have this lovely, you can smell the aroma from the mustard seeds and the ground mustard and it's so good. Ugh. It, it's, try it. The Worcestershire mustard, ground mustard and the mustard seeds and um, the meatloaf is really good. You don't like it, don't, don't. It's not gonna hurt the flavor, but try it. it it's worth a try. Okay, so. I'll stop saying try now. <laughs> anyway. Alright, so I'm molding this with my hands just like a meatball. You gotta mold it. There's no pan for you to mold it or nothing right with your hands. Alright. It's like a stress ball, but you just, you know, mold it bigger. Alright, so I'm making the shape I want because I want to fit both of them in here. Um, and I, because I'm cooking the bacon wrapped one, I put a rack underneath. But if you don't, um, have the bacon because the bacon's fatty too which is why I'm really glad I put turkey in this all right 
but you don't have to use a rack. But remember, if you don't put anything underneath, foil or, or whatnot, you're gonna have that fatty leftover in the bottom. So when your meatloaf's done, take it right out while the oil's hot, while that fat's hot and not solidified yet, because you don't want it sticking to your meatloaf. And just put it on a plate or a rack and let it cool for a minute. All right, so we have a nice oval shaped meatloaf. See my basket weaving bacon goodness going on over here, right? Okay, so I'm gonna plop this bad boy down right in the middle of it, okay? So I am just going to grab the top pieces and you just push the ends down into the meatloaf, just like so. Um, then I'm gonna go to the sides. You can do one at a time. This is all gonna bake in the oven, so you don't have to be fancy with it. Just kind of spread it around. Try to make it even. Even if you overlap, the sucker's baking in the oven for like an hour, so don't worry about it. But just do each piece, pull it over, make it all nice and toasty like a cold winter's day. Who wouldn't mind a bacon blanket? That's a good idea. All right, so. So we're wrapping this up like so. Bacon, bacon everywhere. Now, we're not gonna put anything on this bacon. I got hickory bacon. This meatloaf has enough flavor. You do not need to do that. So I have this lovely spatula my mother-in-law got me. Donna, thank you. It's come to very good use. But I'm going to pick up this loveliness, flip it in my pan like so. Just kind of re-squish my meatloaf here positioning wise because you don't want them kissing each other. This is my bacon pan for tonight. I'm so excited. It's so good. So now I have my regular meatloaf, my bacon coated meatloaf, this regular one again last 10 minutes of cooking I'm gonna pull it out coat it with a brown gravy and put it back in or you could do the same thing with ketchup or make your own red sauce that last 10 minutes of baking bakes it into the loaf it's a very good tactic to use and it makes a huge huge difference instead of having this wet sauce on top you're baking that right into it, it, it it's amazing so I am going to cook these tonight for about an hour and I will be taking photos for you and showing you the wonderful outcome because it's gonna be so yummy I can't wait and I still have to make my vegan mushroom gravy for our vegan loaf that I made earlier so recap my vegan loaf is going in tonight 350 for a half an hour and then I'm gonna top it with the vegan mushroom gravy that I'm gonna make which I will video and I'll show you that it's it's good it's a good it's a good recipe even if you're not vegan you'll like it now this is not vegan this is my regular meatloaves bacon wrapped and then a traditional one not so traditional I always put a twist on things I make them my own which there's nothing wrong with that but they usually taste amazing this is going in the oven for an hour um, this is going to be, I'm going to start it at 400 because I like crisp on the outside of my meatloaf and then I'm going to turn it down after the first half an hour for, to, to 350 and then I'll put the vegan meatloaf in with it and then they'll finish cooking together for the last half an hour. So that's my family meal of the day. I am so happy you joined me today. I hope you learned something. I hope you have an idea. If you do Feel free to send me, share, share your ideas, share your thoughts. If you've tried my recipe, share that too. I love to hear from all of you. Thank you for watching Mama Misty's Real Kitchen. I hope you have a great day and be on the lookout for my vegan mushroom gravy. Take care, everyone.